The raw editing process in every raw editor can be broken down into four steps. With this Lightroom tutorial, let me show you each one of those four steps in detail. As always, feel free to follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. So let's assume you're a beginner with photo editing. You might be wondering what to do first, because Lightroom is offering you quite a bunch of different tools. However, you can just remember the workflow of these four steps. We have the basic adjustments, then we want to do the local adjustments, followed by a little bit of color grading. And finally, we always want to do the sharpening last in our raw editing process. So let's start from the beginning. What are the basic adjustments? We do have lens corrections, which we want to always apply. Then sometimes you want to fix the lens distortion of the image, followed by a little bit of cropping and of course the global exposure adjustments. For every image I open up, the first thing I'm doing is to head into the lens corrections and here I want to just click on remove chromatic aberration. As I click on it, you will not notice much, but let's zoom in on a random edge right here on the roof. Take a close look at this edge. Once I deactivate this checkbox, you can see a thin green line along this edge. And this is chromatic aberration. So we want to remove that by clicking on this checkbox and just make the image cleaner. Sometimes I also decide to enable the profile corrections, which tries to fix the lens distortion. As you can see, this will make the borders of the image a lot brighter and it does fix some of those lines leading towards the center of the image. However, I'm not a big fan of what this thing is doing to this particular image, so I'm not going to use it here. After the lens corrections, what I want to do next is to fix those vertical lines. At the moment, you can see they are leading outside the image, which is looking a little bit strange. So what I want to do next is to head into the transform tab and make use of the vertical slider since I want to fix the vertical lines. I'm just going to bring up the vertical slider until we get a nice straight looking image. And thus we're just fixing the lens distortion. This is looking pretty good. Applying heavy transformation like this, we will end up with a gap at the top of the image. Sadly, Lightroom as of now does not have any fill method to fill this gap. So I'm going to fill it later with Photoshop. But the next logical step from this point on is to do a little bit of cropping to just nicely frame our image. So let's choose the crop tool and I'm trying to keep the subject nicely centered. I'm holding down the shift key to keep the aspect ratio as well. And I think this is looking pretty good. We can try to rotate the image a bit to make it straight, but I'm quite happy with how this is looking. So with those tools, we made sure the base image looks right. We have fixed the chromatic aberration, we have fixed the lens distortion, and we have cropped the image slightly. So now there's one more thing missing from the basic adjustments, and those are the exposure settings. We can find these under the basic panel. Besides adjusting the exposure, we can also work on the white balance, give the image another profile, and work on a few special effects. What I want to do first, I want to change the profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape because I want this image to be more saturated and the Adobe Landscape profile helps tremendously with that. Then I want to change the white balance. For this image, I have a very warm sunset look in mind. This means I'm going to bring up the temperature, introducing more warmth to the image. And at the same time, you can see a slight purple color cast, which we can fix by reducing the tint. And that's looking much, much better. So now that we have adjusted the colors a little bit with the white balance and the profile, we can work on the exposure. Here, it's always very important to keep a close eye on the histogram. You don't want to have any under or over exposure. So for this scene, what I want to do is to bring down the highlights. The histogram isn't indicating any overexposure, but the sky is a little too bright for my taste. So that's the reason for me to bring down the highlights. And you can see we do get a little more detail right in this bright area. At this point, the image starts to get a little bit too dark. I want to bring up the shadows. Just around here looks good. This also helps to create some kind of soft, hazy look for this image, which I like. And then let's also bring up the blacks. Wonderful. At this point, 
I'm quite happy with how the histogram is looking, so I'm not going to adjust the tones anymore. What I want to do is set a little bit of texture and this will give the smallest details some more sharpness. Things like the boardwalk in the foreground will just look a little more crisp. At the same time, as I said, I want to have some soft look for this image. I'm going to use some negative clarity to achieve that. And I'm also going to bring down the dehaze for the same effect. That looks wonderful. And finally, as I said earlier, I want this image to be very saturated. So what I want to do is to bring up the vibrance. I'm only raising it very, very slightly, but I'm also going to raise the saturation a bit. All right, that looks great. And here we have the image after step number one with the basic adjustments. The image on the left shows our starting point and on the right side you can see the edited image. Looks so much better, but of course we are not done yet. Let's continue with step number two, local adjustments. What I mean by local adjustments is basically masking. With the masking, we are going to target specific areas of the image, which we want to further work on. So let's click on the masking icon right here. And I would say, let's start with something simple. I'm going to use a linear gradient and I'm going to drag it over the foreground like this because I want to give this foreground right here some more punch. How can we do that? That's really simple. I'm just going to bring up the clarity. Done. Then I also want to work on the bright spot in the sky on the left side. So I want to use a radial gradient for that. I'm going to create a really big one covering most of the bright area. And I'm going to pull the center outside of the image. Let's make it a little bigger. And what I want to do here is I want to bring up the blacks, which will introduce a little bit of glow. And at the same time, I'm going to bring up the temperature to make this particular area warmer. This is a perfect example why we are using masks to change that. Because if we would adjust the white balance globally for the whole image, everything would be warmer and this does not make sense. We want this area to be warmer without affecting the right side of this image, which should be colder naturally. So we can further work on the color by clicking on this little color box right here. And I wanna choose a very warm color tone. Let's go somewhere here. And let's play around with the saturation. I'm going to crack it up a lot. Awesome. Then one more thing I want to do is to, again, use a little bit of negative dehaze, which works great to improve that glowing effect just like this. Then let's work on the sky on the right side. I'm going to use another linear gradient just like this. What I want to do here is to make the blue part of the sky darker and only the sky. The problem is we do have selected a bit of our subject right here. So what I want to do is I want to click on those three dots, go to intersect mask with and choose color range. Now I'm clicking somewhere in the blue part of the sky and by doing this, we are intersecting the blue color range of the sky with that linear gradient we have created. And thus we are creating the perfect mask for this purpose. So with the mask set up, I'm going to bring down the exposure just a little bit, adding a little more punch to the sky. We can further improve this effect by adding contrast, but that's about it. I think we can use another linear gradient on top of that. However, I'm not going to make it as big as before. And in here, I'm just going to bring down the blacks slightly to add some more contrast. Perfect. Then I'm still not happy with the glow effect on the left side. Let's create another radial gradient. And this time I'm making it really, really thin. Again, I'm overlaying the brightest spot in the sky. And again, I want to warm up this area by bringing up the temperature just like this, introducing a lot more warmth to this particular spot. I'm also going to add more glow by using negative dehaze. That looks great. And finally, a neat little trick we can do is to push the midtones contrast. For this, we want to create a little more complex mask. Click on create new mask, choose luminance range. With the eyedropper, choose a neutral spot in your image. Let's say, the railing of this boardwalk. 
This will nicely select the midtones as you can see with the luminance range selector right here. We can further adjust this selection by bringing down the range a little bit and we can spread the feather. So the selection is a little softer. So to push the midtones contrast, what I want to do, I want to first bring down the highlights and increase the shadows. This will not push the contrast, it will just give us a better starting point. However, to push the contrast, I'm now going to increase the whites and I'm also going to drop the blacks. And you can always compare the image without the mask by clicking on this eye icon. So as you can see, we have nicely pushed the contrast of the midtones of this image by using just this luminance range mask. And I do think this is it for the local adjustments. So here we have the image with just the basic editing done and here's the image with the masking applied. Looks so much better. Now comes the most fun part to me, the color grading. For that, we can start in the color mixer. Here we do have a bunch of different options. We can change the hue, the saturation and the luminance. For this image, I don't think we actually need to change much. But let me give you an example with the hue. Looking at the blue part of the sky, you can see it does have some kind of purple color cast. If we would want to fix that, all we need to do is use the purple slider right here and just bring it further into the blue range. Doing this will give us some way more natural blue tone. I actually think I want to keep it like this. Using the hue, we can also make the sunset colors a little, a little more intense. We could drop the yellow hue, giving us more of an orange or reddish sunset look, maybe like this. However, I do want to work more on the saturation of this image. What I currently don't like is the sky. To be precise, the blue part of the sky. So I want to bring down the blue saturation and since you have some purple in here as well, I'm also going to bring down the purple saturation. Much better. Of course, you could push the warmer sunset colors of this image by bringing up red, orange and yellow, but I think this would be a little bit too much. We're going to affect the saturation in another way at a later point. So I'm not going to use them here. What we can do with the luminance is to just brighten up certain color tones. So let's say we want to make the blue part of the sky darker. All we need to do for that is to bring down the blue luminance slider. However, I don't think this looks good for this image, so I'm not going to do that. Now for sunset shots like this, what I really love to do is the split toning, which nowadays you can find under the color grading panel. Here we can work on the highlights, the midtones and the shadows and assign a specific color tone for each. For this image, I just want to work on the highlights and the midtones, improving the color balance between the warmer and the colder tones. This means in this image, we have warm highlights, which we want to boost a little bit. So let's set up the hue for the highlights. I'm going with a very warm color tone, somewhere in this range. And then I'm going to bring up the saturation a lot, making those warm sunset colors more intense this way. Beautiful. Then we can go into the midtones. We don't want to have those warm color tones over the whole image. We want to have some nice balance between cold and warm. So that's the reason for me to use the midtones. Choose a cold color tone somewhere in that range and slightly bring up the saturation. Perfect. Of course, this is completely dependent on your preferences. You could push things much, much further here. However, I want to keep it like this. So let's continue with the color grading. And for the last step of it, I'm going to head down into the calibration tab. These sliders are very confusing, at least to me. The best way I found to use them is to just play around with them. For most of my images is to use blue primary hue and saturation first. This means I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue quite a bit. This will give us some more beautiful sunset colors and I'm going to bring up the saturation quite a bit to really make this image vibrant. Now we could play around a little more. In this case, I can bring up the green primary hue and also push the saturation here and maybe even push the saturation of the red tones. Wonderful. Let me deactivate the calibration tab so you can see the difference from before to after. Much better. And let me also show you the progress from the original RAW file 
to the almost finished version. You can clearly see the colors look so much better, the overall exposure is better and we have fixed the lens distortion. So all we need to do now is to do a little bit of sharpening. And for that we want to head into the details tab. For the sharpening I'm always applying the same settings. I'm just bringing down the radius all the way while increasing the details all the way up. Then I'm holding down the Alt key and click on the masking. This will reveal where the sharpening is applied to the image. Of course we only want the subject to get sharpened like this. So after setting up the masking we can increase the amount of sharpening. Done. And this was step four of the raw editing process in Lightroom. This is pretty much the finished image. All we need to do now is to fix that gap at the top of the image. This cannot be done in Lightroom without cropping. So we need to switch over to Photoshop. So let's do this real quick. Right click on the image, go to edit in and choose Photoshop. And to fill the gap, I'm going to hold down the control key and click on the layer thumbnail. This will give us a selection of the image. Now I'm going to hit control shift I to invert the selection. And thus we're creating a perfect selection for the gap. We do want to modify it a little bit. So let's go to select, modify and choose expand. I'm going to expand it by two pixels just to be safe to have everything of the gap selected. And once this is done, I'm going to hit Shift F5 with Content Aware selected, hit OK. The reason I'm choosing Content Aware and not the Generative Fill tool is because the Generative Fill is limited to rather low resolution, which the Content Aware Fill is not. And for an easy area like this, this should not be a problem as you can see. So here we have the finished image. All I'm doing now is to clean up a few sensor spots, but that's it. And I guess that's it for the four steps post-processing workflow I wanted to show you inside of Lightroom. So I hope this was interesting and helpful. As always, if you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.